Hello. And today we'll continue with Violent Memoir. Well, well, born and sleepyhead. The playful tease in his voice is enough to bring me to full lucidity, and I yank my head back. I yank my head away. My face and ears feel feel like they're on fire. The author is just leaning back against one of his arms that is now tucked beneath his head, without any phone to distract him. It's for attention that smug smile, his half lidded eyes are on me and they are exuding a sultry tone. Now alongside the fact that the blanket is barely above his hips it is enough if it wasn't for the slight peeking out of his pink board shorts I would have assumed he was naked. Now that helps with the fact that the entirety of his upper body is on display with no clothes or save to cover them. My eyes can't figure out what the focus on, whether that's his massive chest of abdominals that would make Adonis jealous or his biceps that could crush my hand without any effort. I've seen him shirtless before, but this is the first time I've seen him, I've seen it so close. I wouldn't even need to reach my hand out to, to it along with every, I wouldn't even need to reach my hand out to it along with, along every inch of his body. The only thing for certain is that I can't look at his face. If I saw the expression he's wearing right now, I think I would disintegrate on the spot. So I pose for you? But what? Sorry, I didn't mean to stare. I mess with you, man. Not that I'd ever take away someone's chance to get an eye for this. You can, you can touch if you want. No, I couldn't. I really, really shouldn't. I look over for someone in hell, hoping he didn't cast this exchange but I'm um, left more confused by the empty bed is still a mess but there's no lion anywhere in the room. Did someone go take a shower? Now he'll now he'll, he left a little while ago. He wanted to wait for you but I told him I let you sleep in. You crashed out real hard last night. I think yesterday must have taken its toll on me. Sorry for keeping you stuck here. Are you kidding? I would have laid here all day with you if I could. Maybe drag you out for a dip or a trip to the club. Now that sounds like a perfect day, if you ask me. We stay there for a little while longer, enjoying the sun peeking through the open curtains. Someone must have opened those before he left. Also, why I could easily just sleep here all day if we were not careful. I push myself off of the altar and slide the blankets down. Must of Oscar's amusement. The fun finally over? We should get up. You have practice in classes soon, right? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Coach said he was going to be late. So practice got delayed, so it looks like we'll be going to the football team first. What about your classes? Only in the afternoon, baby. I'm a free order in the meantime. How about you, little guy? No classes today. That makes him sit up with a look of pleasant surprise. I have to force myself to look away or else I'd stare at his, at his tense features. What would Lily say if he... What would Lily say if she saw us like this? God, what would my parents say? I just can't imagine my mother's teasing and dad would have been so confused about... Would have been so confused at how a stud like also even noticed me on his radar. I wonder what Marcus would have said. He probably would scold me. Guys like him are, are bad material. If he actually talked to him and they get along great because Marcus was always weak to people who made him laugh. Yeah, that sounds like him. Eartha Wallace, hello. I'm oh, sorry. What did you say? Sounds like you were dra you were daydreaming, hopefully about me. I was just saying that you're lucky not to have any classes or on Fridays. No less, talk about a student's dream. Despite being so early in the morning, barely past eight, he already so he's always so full of energy. His hands are expressing his feelings more than his words or his smile. 
was like a canvas sewing a, a doorway to his mind. Now I'm going to head back to my flat and get changed into something more serious. You should take a shower and meet me on campus in around two hours. Unless you want me to join you, I'll put up with some smelly clothes to get. I'll put up with some smelly clothes to help a guy out. We're cleaning, of course. I'll be fine. It's no problem. No sweat. You should check your phone. Papa Bear's been blowing it up big time. Oh, I completely forgotten to text everyone to let them know that everything was going okay. Lee and Lucas already have a bias against Austin. No wonder they assume something bad if if it's if it's very unfair. I fumbled through my discarded clothes, pockets for it, nearly falling off the bed in the process. Austin thankfully grabs my shoulders and keeps me steady. Calm down there. We are no us. Yeah, sorry. My nervous giggle is enough to dissuade any of Austin's worries. Not that he sold much to begin with and I'm finally able to locate it on the floor under my shirt. It must have fallen out at some point. I see a flurry of messages from numerous different people. The ones that catch my attention the most are from my mother and Selwyn. The other on side, Lucas only had a single message each, unlike Lily's three and Lee's 15. Mama's was mostly checking up on me, but the end of it caught my attention the most. I briefly mentioned Oscar to them on a call in the library, and they were amazed that I made such a sporty friend. I'm glad I didn't send him a photo of him. I know her, and she be asking me all kinds of questions I don't want to hear about. When I came out, the questions didn't stop for days. Several text is simple, but it's enough to set my face alight once again. You look really cute, cuddle up to Oscar. Hope we can do that sometimes too. Your fur looks so soft, all the fur is so rough. Jesus said when he's so upfront about it, he puts Oscar the same. There's no hidden in the window or implications, it's just raw honesty. I'm not even sure how to respond to that. I'll just talk to him later. Afterward, I placate the, the West and the Sir Lee that not only did we not bang, but Oscar was a gentleman. Even if I had to over-exaggerate some parts, it's for the best though, they're much too hard on him. By the time I finish on my phone, Austin's ready to leave. Even his shirt is still missing. It's a good thing he didn't bring anything with him. Are we going out like that? Yeah, my shirt is a little too sweaty today. I told you, I don't like wet shirts. It's not too far of a walk. I don't think anyone's going to complain before I go through. He tells me over and I'm once again reminded how little I'm covered at the moment. Also might have his pants on, but I'm still in my underwear. I expect him to wrap me around in another side hood, but he just lifts my chin to get a good look at me. There's a little glint in his eye that lets me know he's having a bit of fun, but he does seem to be seriously expecting me. Are you sure you're doing okay, man? I was serious when I said I could stick around if you're still feeling heavy. I told you, I'm doing a lot better. You two really brought into my mood. I mean it. You should tell Cell that later. He'll be over the moon. But I'm, no, but I'm not Papa Bear, so I consider it forgotten that. Don't need to think about that bad stuff anyway. Yeah. I know it's correct to not dwell on it too much. Lily's white when she said it was likely just a fluke it would never happen again. But still at the notebook reminds me of everything that happened, including that missing segment. I didn't even check to see if it was missing. I have to do it I have to do that tonight. The rest of the morning went smoothly, though I missed Oscar's presence almost immediately. I have expected him to come bursting into the sour with me, but everything was normal. What sadly wasn't normal was a little intervention I was invited to. I went into my room to find my phone buzzing like crazy. Apparently the others were so reassured by my messages and wanted to talk before I meet up with him again. Lily tried to placate them, but Lee wasn't having any of it. 
and from the sounds of it also wasn't too and from the sounds of it Lucas too wasn't too Lucas wasn't too approving either. Looks like they don't have much faith in Austin. Awesome. Nothing new, I suppose. They didn't particularly have any plans for after hanging out with Austin awesome today, except making, except maybe seeking Sarah now. I'll enjoy a little time together. Maybe he'd like to meet the last two members of our group. Really tried to placate them, but Lee wasn't having any of it. And from the sounds of it, Lucas wasn't too approving either. Looks like they don't have much faith in Oscar, nothing new, I suppose. And didn't particularly have any plans for after hanging out with Oscar today, except maybe seeking someone out. I enjoy our little time together. Maybe he'd like to meet the last two members of our group. And then nothing important happened, and in my two three hours was such a way that flashed until the meeting time arrived. I almost panicked when I realized Oscar didn't tell me where we meet until he sent me a message saying to meet him near our media classroom. We've only been to Alexa Hall once, but so much changed because of it. Despite not even a week passing, I've already made some new friends and we've gotten pretty close. I'm grateful I decided to take this class on a whim. Knowing me, I'd end up just hiding away in my room and not making any friends. It's like high school all over again. But now I got friends who want to spend time with me. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what I did to deserve it, but they seem to enjoy my company. I'm glad Oscar isn't here yet. I'm not sure why, but I feel like like just thinking these negative thoughts will cause the artist to pounce on me. He's never sorry about letting me know how much he appreciates me. It's nice. I can't deny it. I can't deny that it isn't a dealing, but there again, everything about him is a dealing. It's like he's the sun and he's making all of us orbit around him, but in a fun way, it's hard to explain. Or maybe I'm just crushing on some really nice guy who seems really into me for some reason. I'm glad Lily isn't here. God knows she caught when this scene. My thoughts are displaced by the feeling of a lost arm wrapped around my neck. It causes my fur to raise but I know better than to freak out. I can used to be sudden, to be sudden displays of affection out of nowhere. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, but I can't deny that it doesn't make my stomach grow in the best way. There isn't even an ounce of surprise in my body to see a familiar art of this time wearing that familiar blue shirt and khaki shorts. I always forget just how tight that shirt looks on him. Jesus, Wallace. What's worth going on with me? Hey dude, you okay? You was on the out pretty hard there. Yeah, don't worry about it. That makes him his smirk grow and have a little look to glaze over his eyes. I can tell he knows exactly what I'm thinking. It's like he's a psycho. Alright, I'm just glad you're doing okay. Last night was a bit of a scare. There's nothing to stress over. Just focus on it right now. Thanks, Oscar. I'll try. Good, now let's go meet up with these dudes. The team is pretty chill. I met a bunch of them at the local frat parties. So they need to, so they need to get... <sighs> Thanks, Oscar. I'll try. Good, now let's go meet, meet up with these guys. The team is pretty chill. I met a bunch of them at the local frat parties. So they don't need to be scared. I hadn't even thought about that. For some reason, the realization that I, that I have to meet up with guys that likely could crush me with their biceps completely invaded me. I'm just grateful to have someone like Oscar around, but he's larger than most of them. They likely wouldn't pull anything. My dad don't trust Oscar's word. Come on, don't be sad. Before I can protest, he's already pulling me along with him across the campus. I expected a football field to be nearby, but we had and we head towards the edge of the central campus area. Where are we going? The central campus doesn't help the football field. They're on the east campus. It's only a block or two away, but you tend to find most of them, most of the team over there. How did you come across Conrad then? There's a gym over there too, but Conrad used to come to our one though. We have a pool, so we're instantly better. I barely talked to the guy, but the few times I did, he was pretty cute. 
same I wasn't able to get to know him better. There's a somber tone to his voice and it's hard to find a response to that. Despite all of his talking about combat, it's hard to, to think of him as someone who died. That reminds me of that diary page we found in the, night, in the nightmare. After everything that happened, I totally forgot about it. I, I really need to, to check the diary again. I know that entry was missing. We only found the second half of the date. Despite leaving the campus, there's still a significant amount of students traveling the sidewalks. The other students must be really close by if this many people are just walking instead of taking a bus. It's not surprising that it only takes a few minutes to reach the next campus, which is bustling just as much as Central. The architecture here is slightly different. It looks older and closer compared to the hyper-modernized building on main campus. Despite the buildings looking wider and feeling larger, there's a significant amount of extra free space between these buildings. It doesn't even look to have a quarter of the buildings the central campus has, though this is only the ends of it. Welcome to East Campus. This is where I spend most of my time in classes when I'm not having fun. Economics is done on this campus along, alongside all the social studies and a few other things. Most of the sports teams practice here. The swim team is a bit of an exception. There's fields, courts, and whatever you, whatever you want, really. You used to play baseball, right? Yeah. You, you could give it a try. Next week, you'll sign up for all the clubs, including all the sports teams, or you give the swim team a shot. You'll never be lacking in the partner department as long as you got me. It gives me a wink that feels a whole lot more platonic than any he's given me before, but it's still enough to have me nearly stumbling over my feet. I'm not in, I'm not really interested in it anymore. It was something I just did for family. I wasn't really that into it, nor very good at it. Well, what are you interested in? Yeah, not much really. I used to play piano, but not so much anymore. I'm not a very interesting person. Why do you always do that? There's a seriousness in his tone. A story enough to wake me up from the relaxing though that had fallen over me. Also, stares hard enough to crush while since he's lacking that smile. I always see on him. What do you mean? You're always acting like you're boring and not worth being around. I wasn't. You were, man. I don't want you to think of yourself like that. You're a seriously fun dude, and there's no need to be so harsh on yourself. They want to discover themselves here. We're at college after all. He loses his hand out and I expect him to pull a lead and pat my head, but he opts to just cut my cheek in his palm. There's a warm intimacy that I wasn't expecting that's radiating from his sparkling eyes. But he catches himself and pulls away after only a moment, even the heat lingering on my cheeks. That smile is returned to his face and he's looking away towards the campus like he's trying to find anything else to focus on. The little red is peeking through his short fur while his ears are more than enough of a signal for his embarrassment. Something that always feels strange seeing on the endless spill for common honor. The feel is this way. Practice doesn't start for another 40 minutes, but the guys tend to show up early to mess around. I see them nearly every time I'm around here. Do you think they'd be okay with us to answer them? I'm sure it'll be fine. Nothing a little charm can't handle. Plus, if you're asking people, might be a little more loose, you know? Huh? You give off this innocent vibe that makes people gravitate around and help you. You don't even realize you do it either. It's really amazing. I bet you would have been a hit if you put yourself out there more. But maybe that would ruin your charm. There's something about the way he's talking that makes me notice something I didn't before. Also seems more articulate than before. It still has that casual and maxidasial tone, but it feels more structured than he usually is. I wonder if, if I did something to mess with his mood, or if it was it something else. Come on, let's catch him. Don't want to have to cut our chat short because pressure starts, right? Oh yeah, you're right. I didn't think about that. I got you. Now, get that butt moving before I have a carry again. Okay, okay. Despite his pussy words, the playful tone has both of us laughing as he wraps his arm around me.
I never that ever went to have heavy focus on their sports teams. I've heard numerous stories of the ever went to football team making it to the Nationals constantly. The very loud fans made it clear as well. But I wasn't expecting but we walked past on the East Campus. The field spans there was blocks and houses more than just a football field, but there's areas of baseball and soccer. In the distance, I can see cases which I can only assume are for tennis, badminton, and even a group will probably see baseball swings and the field next to it is in the indication. Whoa. Whoa is right. Everyone at the college is considered an elite school for a reason. Still, we're no Harvard, but we do pretty well around here. Everyone wouldn't be anywhere near as big without this place. I knew this place was pretty intense for grades. I knew how hard I knew how intense the locals got for the college sports, but I didn't know we were this huge. The field is filled with students running about. Most of them look to be preparing for practice, but there's a decent amount of them gathering near our side. With the benches, tables, and concrete pathways connecting to the scarce buildings, this is likely a common place for people to just meet up and hang out, maybe even watch some practice. The place isn't like a super elite, it's more on the lower end, but it still gets a lot of students cramming to get in. As the case of here looks great on resume, you get some pretty great some pretty great perks. I can't believe I got in. I told you this isn't some super elite. As long as your grades are good enough, you can convince them to let you in. You just really need extracurricular stuff and great grades to get scholarships. Getting those is crazy around here. He can say that again. I barely made it in, let alone qualify for any scholarships. I was just lucky my parents had some extra cash they didn't need anymore. I don't think I could afford to come here otherwise. I wonder how Lee's able to afford coming here. It doesn't look like he has a lot of money, or maybe this is the reason he doesn't have much. Come on, the guys are over there. They look to be just messing around, so we can just chat to one of them. He points towards a group of guys chilling and with housing near the football field. They're in what looks to be more casual gym clothes than any uniform, and there's nowhere near enough for a full team. I guess not everyone has sold up yet. Life for the football field and bleachers are too far from where we are is not too long before the members catch sight of us. A group of them way towards Oscar, who gives them a thumbs up and a wink. They don't make much effort to come over and chat. It just seems like a polite gesture more than anything meaningful. You know them? Them? Nah, not really. Just some guys I see around at some of parties you'll find around campus. Mostly in frat houses, you know? I wouldn't call them close friends. We're only able to get a little a little bit closer before a gray wolf wearing an actual if we the white and blue uniform runs up to us. He's a little on the lane side compared to some of the larger guys here, but he still looks like he could crush me if he wanted. Hey, everything all right? Do you need something from one of the guys? On a tea captain. Anything you need, just ask away. I expected also to take the reins, but he just looks down at me. I guess I'm the one reading the diary, so I probably know more about this than he does. I just hope he helps me out if things get awkward. I've never really been the greatest at socializing. My lack of a significant friends throughout high school can attest to that. We were hoping we could talk to someone we knew Conrad. Were you the captain when he was playing last year? Could we ask you some questions if that's alright? At the midst of Conrad, the wolf smile falters but doesn't completely disappear, though his flattened ears and limp tail tell me that this is definitely a sore topic. I wasn't too close to him. He chatted occasionally and I helped him with his plays, but, but he never came to me about his personal life solid. It's okay, I'm sorry that it happened. It must have been hard. It was definitely strange to come to practice with one of the guys missing. I just never expected someone to do that to him. 
Why would she do that? That's what we're trying to, to understand. Do you know anyone that could help us? He wasn't too close with a lot of the guys, but I know one guy he was close with. He's with a couple of guys at the back. Go chat to them. The group points towards what looks to be a group standing a little bit away from the others. They seem to be having a good time, so hopefully they'll be willing to talk. Hey, that's going to be a massive help. No problem. Just try to be a little nice about it. He was pretty torn up when it all happened. I'll send him a text now to let him know you're coming so we're not dropping it on him. We'll be careful. Don't worry, man. I'm great at keeping the mood up. I bet you're a big man. If you need any help, don't be afraid to wave me over. I'll keep an eye on you guys just in case. With that, he raises us off as he wait as he walks over to another group of players. He must be popular with the way he just seamlessly slips into their conversation. Never seen him before, but I've heard of him. He's a pretty great quarterback who I've heard. Everyone loves him. Never seen him at a party before, though. Maybe he's just studying instead. Probably he looks like he'd get along with, get along well with. He suddenly cuts himself off and, and stares ahead with a heart expression that I never seen on his face before. It's not upset, but more concerned, like he just tasted something weird, and he doesn't know how to react. Following his gaze, I catch sight of what looks to be some kind of reptile. As he stares at the two of us, wait, not the two of us, just the author next to me. He doesn't look too pleased at what he sees. He pushes past the other two players he was talking to, a large Wattwater and Lanky Weasel, who both look back to see what the reptile is doing, only to, to land their eyes on the author as well. It's clear from the way their eyes widen upon the sight of Oscar that they're familiar with him as well, though their reactions are vastly different. The canine just rolls his face and sides while the weasel's grin grows to just a mischievous level that sends a chill down my spine. He looks to follow after the reptile, only for the canine to grab his arm and yank him away. That leaves the reptile stalking towards us, his eyes focused solely on Oscar. Oh boy, who's he? Uh, he doesn't give me an answer. His eyes are not looking anywhere but the reptile in front of him, like he's considering his avenues for escape. Despite this, he doesn't look scared but more exasperated. What that was about to come is clear Oscar was no part of it. For a moment, I thought he was actually going to leave, but his gaze falls on me and he attempts to give me a weird sort of smile, failing miserably in the process. As he gets closer, I can see the reptile is actually a skink. He's Wearing a plain purple tank top and white shorts, he's lacking any kind of, of accessories other than a small piece of where his white eyebrow would be. From the distance, he looks much too skinny to be a football player, but now that he's closer, I can see that he's, that he's surprisingly defined and his thighs are larger than both mine, than both of mine combined. So they're, they're nowhere near Oscars, but he's in a totally different ball game. For someone who's laying as a skink, it's as lean as skink is, it's clear he's just as much of an athlete as the other. He's just as much of an athlete as the larger guys on his team. Now that he is closer, his scowl has lost a bit of the sting that it had when he first started stalking towards us, but whatever his eyes flick over to be, there's a wave of uncertainty that flows over his face for a moment. Hey Oscar. Hey. You seriously don't remember, don't you? Actually, you never told me your name. Can't blame me for that one. The skin eye drops as he ponders what the author said. Eventually, he just lets out a sigh and just holds his arms. And just folds his arms. The attitude radiating off the author's guy is probable. Fine, it's Nathan. Who's the little guy? Your latest victim? What's your name? Don't worry, I won't bite you. I'm not the one you need to worry about here. Jeez, it wasn't that serious. That causes the skin to squint his eyes at the other, and if a glare could cut stone, there's no doubt in my mind that also would be slicing hair. I'll decide if it's that serious. What happened? Your friend here did a pump and a dump on me. A what? 
we just had a one night stand. It was just a hookup. Except you didn't have to avoid me like the plague and block my number. I ran into you while heading to practice. You just ignored me. I thought I was crazy, but you did it again until I gave up. Now Nathan doesn't even look angry anymore. He just looks sad. Austin picks it up too, and despite the fact that he still looks as uncomfortable as ever, his eyes do droop the moment the reptile's anger dissipates. Hey man, I didn't mean to make you upset. I meant it literally, but I said it wasn't serious. It wasn't anything but a one-night stand. I have a world that I don't keep in touch with people I sleep with. Hold on. That's due to me. Did I hear that right, Oscar? Not only doesn't keep in touch with people he sleeps with, but he also actively avoids them entirely, huh? Also must have noticed his ears suit up because he looks down at me with a surprised look on his face like he was just realizing what he had said. Who's this supposed to be? Your latest victim? Jesus, Oscar. He looks so cute and nice. How about... Okay, okay, boys. That's enough. Why didn't finally let me go? So I'm going to slide in here before things get ugly. It's a weasel who the skink was talking to from before. I think I didn't even notice it didn't even notice him approaching us. It's like he appeared out of thin air, like Oscar looks sought at the weasel's sudden appearance. Piss off, Wilf. This doesn't concern you. Actually, it will soon if he it will soon this keeps up. I managed to talk wine out I wanted to talk wine over there. He points over towards the bench where the wild wilder from earlier is sitting and watching the two of us. Well, Watson is a bit generous as he immediately face palms a moment the muscle that points him out points him out to us. Next to him is a wolf that chatted to us earlier, and while he's clearly trying to hide it, it's obvious that he's watching us as well. This must be be a pretty big deal for Nathan if they're this concerned about it. And he finally agreed to let me come in and defuse the situation before Carter or Coates has to get involved. You're looking a little steamy, and if I had to guess, this must be Oscar. I'm able to get closer to get a closer look at the weasel, and the first thing I notice is just how different we look, and not just in body type as far as a totally different color to mine. Instead of my pure white, he only got patches of white fur on his neck and on his neck that lead up to his face and down to his chest. The rest of his fur is, is a beautiful shade of burnt sienna that makes me jealous. Uh, Nathan's tank tie looked properly fitted and like someone ready for training, Will's white one looks obscenely large and several so sizes too big for such a lanky body. Like Arthur's where it feels like a choice for comfort, the weasel feels deliberated, stretched to the point where it barely covers anything. He is clearly trying to sew off his body. It's not hard to see why either. I was surprised when I saw Austin the first time how much muscle he had, but well, this guy has nowhere near the mass of the Arthur. He has enough definition that he reminds me of Selwyn, but even more. He's probably the one of the skinniest guys out, out here. The only other member that's comparable is a rabbit stressing over with another group. The main intention grabbing thing about him, though, is his golden eyes. There's something predatory in his gaze that sends a silver down my spine, both in fear and a little bit of something else. To call him attractive is an understatement. He might generally be one of the hottest guys I've ever met, but there's something about him that screams, bad idea. I'm just glad he's focused on Oscar. I'm just glad he's focusing on Oscar and doesn't seem to have noticed me. The way he's devouring the Oscar will probably be too much for me, though. Also looks to be very aware of the weasel's gaze. I'm kidding. I know who you are. You're Selwyn's little buddy, or big buddy, I suppose. You're first with Selwyn. He never mentioned a weasel before. Yeah, we're more distantly connected. That just causes my eyebrows to raise even further and Oscar tosses me a confused glance as well. Whoever this guy is, it's clear that the author has no idea who he is. I have to ask Selwyn sometime. Well, don't worry, 
from what Nathaniel here has told us, it's pretty, it sounded pretty clear that it was supposed to be a one night stand, and he just got a little hopeful for the first time. Hey, shut up. Not even admitted that you were the stupid one, and as much as I love watching you squirm, and I do very much enjoy it, Carter asked me, this is, this is, Carter asked me this as a favor, so suck it up and talk to the guys. Don't be such a bitch. You can talk. You're the most petty bitch here. But at least I keep it under control. Now talk or don't, now talk or don't, but hurry this up. People are beginning to know us. That causes all of us to look around and notice that many of the groups, not just members on the football team, have noticed that rather, the rather heated discussion going on over here. That man doesn't get the skink to flush up and that causes the weasel, that causes the weasel to giggle before sauntering away. When he begins to before his eyes land on me, he makes a sudden turn towards me. He just looks me over before laying down until his face is as is at eye level with my own. That's there's a, that familiar muscle that's said coming off of him. Though it reminds me of home, but there's a spiciness to his that makes me want to lean in more. It's a good thing that I have enough decency and self-control to not do that. I feel like that would be like making a deal with the devil. That doesn't stop him from leaning in close to my ear, his breath tickling it as he whispers quiet enough so no one else can hear. Damn boy, you cute. What are you doing messing around with a guy like that? He's part of my media group. We both know that's not all. I can see it in your eyes. Normally, I tell you to not get your hopes too high with someone like that, but I know your type. You guys tend to have a way to get what you want that even I don't understand. What? Don't stress about it. You just remind me of someone else. You can ask your little lying friend about that one. Then he just walks away with no goodbye or anything, leaving me a little days with his scent clogging up my nose. I have a feeling I won't see this I won't see that guy again, despite how strange he was, he did help calm things down. You know why? I look a little bit out of it. Austin's kneeling down next to me. I didn't even notice he'd started rubbing my back. It's enough to help me get back to the proper headspace after that detour. Nathan's months calmer everything the weasel just did, but he just but he still doesn't look the but he still doesn't look too fond of the otter. But he's ignoring him enough to just focus on me now. Sorry about that. I still I shouldn't have made a scene over nothing. It's fine, I don't think anyone here expected that. His eyes suit over to the otter despite the flare of, of annoying, they do something enough for him to hold a hand out to the otter in a peace offering. I'm still not a fan of you, but I guess I'm being a little unreasonable. Also takes it without hesitating, flashing that wonderful white smile that never fails to lift up the mood. Is even doing a shockingly good job on the skink, though he tries to dwell it fast. What are under the bridge, man? I don't like to dwell on these kind of things, so let's just move on and let's and let it go. Sure, I'm more than willing to pretend it never happened. There's a spark in Austin's eyes that tells me he wants to say something else. I said something about their previous encounter, but he has the tact to keep it to himself. I'm perfectly fine with forgetting it too. It'll make things easier. The skink takes that as an agreement with his statement, but it feels like Austin's referring to something else entirely. There's no basis for it other than my own intuition, but it feels like there's something more there. Oh well, it's probably not important. I'm sorry you had to see all that. You don't look like you deserve any of it. At least he's talking to me now, and there's an embarrassment to his voice that makes me want to give him a big hug. This is a stark contrast to how he was when he was cursing Oscar out. You never told me your name. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Wallace. Wallace Stewart. It's nice to meet you. That's a nice one. Much better than Nathaniel. You seem like a pretty decent guy. Better than some of the assholes here. How did you get stuck with this guy? We're on a group project together. We're trying to find out 
more about what happened with Helena Lawson and what she did. We were hoping you could tell us what you knew about her and Conrad. The skink person's lips and that it looks to be really thinking about what happened. There's a twinge of sadness that skips across his face for a second, but it doesn't last long. Were the two of you close? It doesn't sound like he was too popular with the rest of the team. That sounds kind of strange. I heard you guys were pretty close. I expected the skink to just ignore him or potentially tear him off, but that little spark of sadness returns to his face and he just stares at the ground for a few moments before answering. Conrad didn't really like going out with the guys to bars, didn't go with them to pick up girls, any of that. He just wasn't that kind of guy. But the guys didn't like me too much either at first. I came here a year after him and being a freshman, I was already low on a totem pole. Then people found out I was gay and it got awkward. It wasn't like Ryan, people don't fuck with him. It's not like before where being gay in sports was a death sentence, but some guys can be assholes about it. Conrad, he was the first guy to be nice to me. He sounds like a pretty great guy. He's really cool, but most people didn't want to get to know him. He loved football, but he was also kind of a nerd too. We watched old movies together all the time. Can't do that anymore. Shit, man. I'm sorry that happened. We don't have to ask you anything. If you don't want to us, you don't want us to. We understand this is a pretty sensitive topic. This probably wasn't a good idea. I go to leave, but he grabs my hand, but he grabs my arm and sits his head. Despite the melancholy topic, there's a slight smile on his face now. It's okay, you seem like a nice guy. I don't mind helping you out with your project. It sounds like you guys really care. But really? Thank you so much. We have to start. Uh How much did you know about Helena and Conrad's relationship? Not much surprisingly, I didn't even know he had a girlfriend at first. He didn't really talk about having one, about having anyone like that. Really, that sounds strange. Normally, guys love talking about their girls. Most of the dudes on the swim team are always talking about their girlfriends or their hookups. He never mentioned her. No, he didn't mention her. I just thought. She was a friend. Despite what it sounded like before, we weren't super close. I only met his other friends a couple of times. We were close to the team and hung out every once in a while, but we both had our separate friend groups. I never even met Helena personally. She came to a game. She came to a game to cheer Conrad on once, but we never talked. I know I shouldn't have gotten my hopes up. After all, Helena wasn't directly associated with a football team. But I've still been hoping that there might have been something. My disappointment must have shown on my face because Nathan's eyes widen as he ends up sputtering his next sentence out in a nearly incoherent was. But it's not like and I know nothing. We might not have been best friends, but we hung out a lot. I even met Quinn a couple of times. After Helena sold out to the game, he was open to talking about her too. He looks out of breath by the time he finishes. There's a flush to his face and ears. He looks winded enough that people might assume training had already started. Now the only sounds are his painting and Oscar's chuckling, which just causes the reptile to get even more riled up. No proper blood vessel, man. So I just didn't want you guys to have come out here for nothing. Now there's a guy from the bar I hit on. I was wondering where he went. Shut up. Austin's right. Now that he's calmed down, he's much nicer to everyone, including Austin. He's really awkward in a way I wasn't expecting. Is rather cute. So he met Quinn. What was she like? Glamorous. She always looked amazing. She loved to show off the things he had. Honestly, it made me a little jealous. She had guys from the football team falling over themselves with her. She met the team. Yeah, she come over for practice a lot. Most of the time she was, most of the time it was for combat, but she talked to the boys as well. Honestly, I think some of them are more upset about losing her than him. Don't say that. People must have cared about him. I mean, sure, the guys got along with him pretty well. They were always trying to drag him with him, if he refused all the time, but there's only so much you can care for someone that's just an acquaintance. 
there's a summerness in his voice that, that conveys just how much he believes and that's regardless of its regardless of it if it's true it's a thought too sad for me to even think about i was the closest guy to him out of everyone on the team i was really upset when it first happened but even i've got even i've gotten over but even i've gotten on with my life mostly i just wish he knew more knew more you know what i mean there's so much speculation about what happened we don't even know why she did it. They said it's because Conrad was cheating on her with Quinn or another one of her friends, but that can't be true. He showed no interest in Quinn. He kept saying she was like a sister to him. He kept saying she was like a sister to him, and from what he told me, Helena's friend didn't like him at all. So you don't think he was cheating on her? I know he wasn't. Conrad wasn't that kind of guy. He didn't even do any hookups. It wasn't just bars. There's some girls that sometimes hang around the locker rooms, but he always declined them. He just wasn't that kind of guy. Oscar hasn't been contributed to a conversation that looks to be deep in thought about something. There's a hint of amusement at the corner of his mouth, but it's overwhelmed by the uncertainty creating his question his features. Something wrong? Huh? Uh, nah. It's nothing, man. Hey, are you sure he wouldn't cheat or Helena with someone else? Maybe he already had someone on the side. That would explain why he never went out with any of the guys. Despite asking the questions, there's something in Austin's demeanor that makes me feel like he already knows the answer. It feels more like a diversion than anything else. I'm sure he didn't have anyone. While he never met, while he never complained about being single, he did mention that he thought dating Someone would be nice to just to get the guys off his back. Get the guys off his back. Yeah, okay. So don't go telling anyone this, especially Carter, our team captain. He was the one who sent you over to me. He can't find out about this or else there'll be hell. The skink even makes an effort to check around to make sure no one else is listening. Take, take an extra care to make sure that the wolf is still preoccupied talking to the wild wilder in the bench. Mine, if I remember correctly, Conrad told me that a lot of the guys were harassing him about not getting with any of the girls, so Quinn set him up with Helena to get him to get them off his back. I don't think he cheated on her then. It doesn't make sense, you know? If he was into some chick, then she could have just she could have just been his girlfriend instead of that instead of that would have hit two birds with one stone. I was just worried about that. The whole thing doesn't really add up. Maybe Helena had a different motive. Maybe the diary will tell us more. Maybe just, maybe she just assumed things were going on. Huh? Doesn't that make sense? Conrad's faithful, but he's always hanging around with her roommate. Being closer to her than his girlfriend, not too much of a leap to, for her to assume he was cheating and snapped. You think she killed him over an assumption? That's a flash of anger. Nathan, at least earlier, is not directed at Austin this time, but like the girl in the center of all of this, it doesn't stop it from making me feel uneasy, especially with his tongue hissing. Hey now, I'm, I'm just throwing something out there. We don't really know much, man. She might have had other things going on, and this was just the final straw. You're right, sorry, I just wish we knew more. The police just called it solved, and after a short investigation, said it was an open and set case. The skin deflates faster than before, while there were moments of sadness peeking through. This is the first time he's let it completely overshadow his body language. I'm about to say something to comfort him when Oscar reacts first and wraps an arm around the skin, yanking the poor guy hard against him as he closes the gap between the three of us. I expected Nathan to last out or scold Oscar for acting this way, but he just freezes up. A steadily increasing blush begins to form through his weird transitive scales. Hey, don't be so down about it, man. There ain't much you could have done. Wallace wants to look into it so we can let you know anything we find, right, little dude? Yeah, you've already given us a lot to think about, so I have some ideas on where to start. If you remember anything else about combat, let us know. We might be able to solve something together. I say that brought some energy back into the reptile, but honestly, I think for the way his eyes never leave the artist's giant chest, that's 
that there's something else draining his mind from the depths. That just reminds me of what they were arguing about earlier, about what I also said about the people he slept with. Thanks you two. I haven't really talked about this in a while. I've mostly gotten over it. I'm not too sad anymore. Like I said, we weren't too close. I only knew him a year, but I wish I knew more. He pulls away from the otter, who lets him go with little difficulty. He looks significantly better than I've seen him since we met. I think he was still holding reservations towards Arthur, but I think that Bliss has been partially restored. For his part, Oscar returns to his side, but also bring a hand down to the back of my neck, gently massaging my shoulders. I can feel the tip of his tail messing around with mine. I have to keep my composure or else I'll start looking as flustered as a skate. I'll let you know if I find anything. There's a lot of messages between us I can look through regarding where we talked about Helena and Quinn. There's a lot of stuff about Helena's friend too. That helps a lot. You guys should probably go. Coach will be here any second. He's not too fond of Stuart's messing around on the, on the field. He, he won't hesitate to scream at you guys till you leave. Sounds like a fun guy. Also, lighthearted tone is enough to bring the smile out of the two of us. Then he looks to be turning to leave when he, sees, when he stops to look down at me and that pink shade returns to his face. Uh, Wallace, was it? Yes? Would you want to spend time together sometime? You're a really nice guy. I'm pretty familiar with the places around campus. That would be fun. Maybe some of the other members of our group could come too. I bet they'd love to meet you. Right, yeah, totally. I'd love to meet them. We exchange numbers for it, but for some reason he looks disappointed and a little embarrassed, but there's an assignment to him as well, which helps keep the awkward mood at a minimum. Thanks, Wallace. I'll catch you guys later, okay? Thanks for your time. See ya, man. Maybe try to be a little straightforward this time. Little dude here is a bit naive, but that's part of his trial, yeah? Huh? Yeah, I'll try that. Thanks, also. We'll talk again this time, right? Of course, I'm gonna be hanging around Wallace. It sounds like you want to as well, so we'll be stuck together no matter what. He gives the skin a wink that must hold a secret sign or a message that I don't have, that I don't catch because there's a warm flush that returns to his face. He keeps looking away whenever our eyes meet, too. What's this thing about? Uh, see you later, Wallace. The skin retreats with a nervous laugh before I can, I can figure out what they're talking about, and that just leaves me with a snickering order next to me. I feel completely left out with a joke. That messed something up. Nah, man, he was just trying to ask you out. He was? Yeah, man. I don't know if you realize it, but he caught his attention pretty early on. I noticed it right away. I didn't expect him to try and ask you out, though. He used to be a lot sorry last year. That's when you first met him? Yeah, we met at a frat party. It was a bit of a bust. The beer was pretty bad, and the whole thing fell through pretty fast. I managed to meet a cute little skinny freshman who, who tripped over his words as he started, as he stared at my chest. That part has changed. I'm once again reminded of that, of that whole blow up and what its implication for the two of us really mean. I know I shouldn't be surprised that Oscar didn't want anything serious. He told me just as much that he only does casual, but I didn't expect it to be that intense. Come on, I think I can see their coats over there. And I already have to deal with one on my butt. I don't need another one. Why? We leave the field in silence. Most of Austin's confusion and attempts at lightening the mood. I just can't get the conversation the two of them had over my the two of them had out of my head. Carter the wolf we met earlier approached us as we left to make sure everything went all right with Nathan and Oscar, assured him that they managed to smooth it out. But his sinister smile was as radiant as usual. It's not hard to see that he's concerned about my sudden silence. It's unfair to him to not address, but I just need a bit of time to sort out my thoughts. Once we're back at the entrance of the East Campus, which is much more sparse now, 
with most students assumed to be in classes or headed off home, there's still a decent amount of foot traffic, but we're no longer surrounded by people. Hey, is everything all right? You've been pretty quiet, man. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it's just, was everything that Nathan said true? About Conrad, I don't think he'd have a reason to lie to us. He seemed like a pretty nice guy, if you ask me. I wasn't meaning about that. He said that after you, you know. Good dump. Yeah, he said you avoided him. That finally makes Austin stop, causing me to bump into him in my distracted stupor. Despite most of his smile shrinking to just the shadow of Gwen, of a Gwen he still takes the time to reach out and steady me. You know me, man. I didn't want anything serious. It's not like we knew each other. I didn't even know the guy's name. It was just a hookup as a party. That's all I wanted. But you said that it's your rule to not keep in touch with people you slept with. Nathan made it seem like you actually avoided him too. I told you, it's just a flame, something fun. I get that, but that doesn't mean you have to avoid them entirely. What happens if you guys hit it off and have fun? You said you met guys at the beach before. Do you avoid them too? He doesn't answer that, and now his smile has completely disappeared. He's no longer meeting my eyes, and there's a blankness to his expression that I remember from uh, that I remember from after he had his argument with Coach. The uncomfortable posture he wore while Nathan grilled him about this has returned. It's hard to ignore the guilt in my chest. But this is a serious question. What about guys who you keep trying to sleep with, like like me? What would you do if they tried calling or messaging you? Ah, sir, I just blocked them. I don't want any conflict out of that. I'm always clear it's not anything serious. I didn't want anything more than just a simple lay, and that's what I get, man. Most guys don't throw a fuss about it. They know what we're getting into. Nathan's a space of case. That guy was a virgin that wanted more, so he caught feelings when he shouldn't have. We barely knew each other. But what about me, huh? Now I'll just alert, it's like life has flown, it's like life has flowed back into him. That smile still hasn't returned, but just his sharp expression is more than welcome compared to that blank nothingness. He looks like someone just threw him overboard into the Arctic Sea. It makes me feel a little guilty, but I know myself. If I didn't address this now, I'd be stuck thinking about it, thinking about it at late at night. His composure quickly returns to that agape expression more to one of concern. He squats down to keep us eye level as he slowly puts his arm around my shoulder, giving me more than enough time to pull away. But I don't need, but I don't because I want him to prove himself. So far, I also been nothing but kind and honest with me whenever I ask. He deserves time to explain himself. To prove he wasn't just going to bed, to bed me and ghost me like Nathan. Hey man, there's no way I do that to you. But you just said that you ghost the guys you hook up with. Why wouldn't you do the same with me afterwards? It's not like that. You're listen. I haven't met anyone like you. We really enjoy spending with you, man. I wouldn't just abandon you. Those were strangers. I consider you a friend. I always treat my friends well. Sure, I might be a wolf that I don't get close. Those I sleep with, but I told you, there's always expectations, there's always exceptions. But hey, we don't have to do anything. I wouldn't push you into sleeping with me. I'd rather you want to, but I'm just telling you, there's no way I just drop you. We're too close for it. You mean it? All of it. I couldn't take it back. I wanted to. Someone would bite my head off if I did. Or worse, he might tell Power Bear. He knows him now. Could you imagine what he'd do if he found out? He gives a convincing look of, of horror. There's even a silver that goes along with it, though he quickly gives up the facade with her weight. Despite my best efforts, it cracks a smile on my face. He just knows how to get me to smile, no matter what. There's that smile. Don't stress about it, and don't let it ruin your day. Things were good. Things were going good, right? Yeah, they were. Do you want me to stop touching you? I can if you want me to. No, I don't mind. That brings his smile back into force. 
And it's enough for me to roll my eyes and toy him. Us is truly the hardest book to read. He's so obvious, but so confusing sometimes. That's what makes him so fun. Alright, enough depressing stuff for now. Let's go to the pool so you can meet the boys. I can take it there. Coast gets to me. Go away. Thanks for understanding. Of course, man, I don't want to hurt anyone. I do feel bad with what happened with Nathan. I wouldn't let that happen with you. I know. Great, because that's more than enough heavy stuff for one year. Time for some fun. Sound good? More than good. Okay, I'm gonna start right here. So, turns out some of the people in the football field don't particularly like Austin that much. I thought they were a little, I, I assumed they would be a little bit more buddy buddy, you know, like sort of friends on there. Thought he might be a little popular, but then again, it was mentioned that he didn't have much friends and. Um, in his um, one night stands may be one of the reasons why I mean he slept with one of the football players I think his name is Nathan and after he had a one night stand he blocked him on his phone and just sent him out of his life like I think Austin might have anticipated that he would have wanted to contact us contact him more after their one night stand, so he decided to block them. So I guess that's Austin's way of letting him of letting him know that it was just a one night stand and that you're just a stranger, you're not friends, we're just doing it for sex. But I think him blocking people is overboard. I mean, I get that Oscar is into that, you know, just one night stands, you know, casual sex. But I think he's sort of known that there are a lot of people who, you know, especially like freshmen who don't think of sex as like casual to think of it as like something that two people who have some care for each other do Nathan was kind of I wouldn't say naive but he just wasn't he was just you know a freshman he wasn't he wasn't quite up to date with how Adults do yet, you know. The casual sex, you know. He thought it was something like two people did, you know, to come together. And I think he learned the hard way through Oscar that that's not entirely what it is. And I don't think Oscar was entirely clear with Nathan or the other guys he casually had sex with about about what he was there for, like what he was, what he was attending. I don't think he really told them that it was just casual sex and that he has no feelings for them. I think if he told them that, then they would not have been hurt. I mean, they would not have been as hurt by Oscar in the aftermath. You know, they would have just either just decide not to do it or they did do it. They would just do it and then, you know, go about their business without trying to contact Oscar. So I don't think it was necessary for Oscar to just block them, you know, after he did 
one night stand. But anyway. So they got contentious on the football field and one of the other football players was thinking about getting involved to some point or two, so Austin's not all that light on the football team, though they were pretty friendly with Wallace. And they even kind of tried to warn him about what Austin did to them and that he would do the exact same thing to him. And Nathan, he was very friendly. Way more friendly than I thought. Way more friendly than I expected him to be, you know. Considering he's on the football team. Maybe it's a little stereotype I have, but, you know, usually football players are kind of arrogant. And, and if they see somebody like Wallace, they want nothing to do with you because they see you as being beneath them. But the football players were very friendly with us, with Wallace, especially Nathan, you know, the side type. So... So apparently, um, um, Conrad, the football player that um, Helena killed, he was not that, he was not quite as popular as I thought he would be. I mean, he wasn't that close to football players. And Nathan said he didn't think the girl, he didn't think, well, I mean, I like the Helena's, girl, you know, like girlfriend, you know, like girl, you know, that got her to hook up with Conrad. It seems like, um, like she might have, like, I don't quite remember, but I think somebody, I think it could have been her that did not like Conrad that much, so I kind of forgot already, but, you know, with the diary, I was more concerned about Oscar and the football players more than the diary itself, but I might have to read over that again. But anyway, um, Nathan doesn't think that Oscar cheated on Helena at all, and that there's something else would. Maybe it has something to do with Helena's girlfriend there. So, um, we'll continue with Violet Memoir next time. Thank you all for watching. Bye.